Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Um, this lesson is going to be covering your respiratory and renal compensation mechanisms. So basically what that means is if you have a pH imbalance, these are the two body systems that get called into play to try to fix that pH imbalance. We need to get that pH back into that very narrow range of 7.35 to 7.45. So we're going to take a look at what the respiratory system can do in a pH imbalance, and then we'll take a look at the, um, what the kidneys, that's our renal compensation, what they can do. And then we'll have one more video kind of a summarizing the imbalances and how your body deals with um, respiratory acidosis and alkalosis and metabolic acidosis and alkalosis. We'll talk a little bit about that. Okay, so let's say uh, we're going to use our lungs to compensate for a pH imbalance. So this slide came from your respiratory system chapter. So you can go back chapter 20. I think is respiratory system. So it is in regards to hypercapnia. Now, before we didn't talk about a pH imbalance back in the respiratory system, we just talked about hypercapnia. But now we know that when you increase CO2, what is that going to do to the pH? You should have pretty good with this relationship. If you increase CO2, you're going to decrease the pH, right? It's because the CO2 is going to the problem is your, um, the hydrogen ions. And so you're going to decrease the pH. And so what your body wants to do is to get rid of that CO2. Or if you have hydrogen ions coming from something else, you will trigger this respiratory compensation. So either by hypercapnia or other acids showing up in the system, what our body wants to do is to drive that equation, right? So the bicarbonate, carbonic acid bicarbonate buffer equation, we need to go this way. So to fix the problem, compensation is a way to fix the problem. So we need to blow off and get rid of excess carbon dioxide. So what we're going to do is we're going to stimulate, right, a whole bunch of stimulation, stimulation, stimulation. We're going to increase our respiratory rate, blows off excess CO2 if our lungs are working properly, blows off excess CO2, and that will help drive that equation to the right turning the hydrogen ions basically into water that we exhale. So this is how our respiratory system compensates for acidosis um, in that we are able to blow off excess hydrogen ions. If we were to have an alkaline situation, so in this case it's showing hypocapnia, because if you remember low CO2 equals a high pH, so this is going to be uh, alkaline. And we know that we can create more hydrogen ions by retaining carbon dioxide. So again, if our lungs are working properly, we will actually slow down the respiratory rate. Hypocapnia is not enough carbon dioxide. So in this case, we are reducing, 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 decreasing the respiratory rate, slowing that down, increasing our carbon dioxide. We are going to drive the equation this way producing hydrogen ions, and that's going to help bring us back into um, pH balance. So a respiratory compensation really is changing the rate of breathing, your respiratory rate, to, to kind of manipulate that carbon dioxide and the whole buffer equation to either make hydrogen ions if we're alkaline or to blow off hydrogen ions as carbon dioxide and water if we are in an acidic condition. All right, so that's our respiratory compensation. Um, our kidneys, so now we're going back to these wonderful pictures of our simple cuboidal epithelial cells. So in our acidosis situations, so that's the first panel on the left here. So three major buffering systems in tubular fluid, which are essential to getting rid of hydrogen ions. So this is going to be our case of um, low pH. We are in acidosis. So for whatever reason, we have high hydrogen ions. We want to get rid of those. So if you remember back in our renal physiology, we we're keeping track of the things that could be reabsorbed and secreted. And in a normal situation, we were reabsorbing a whole bunch of bicarb and kicking out a whole bunch of hydrogen ions. And that's our normal state. If you are in acidosis, this just picks up even more, kind of a more efficient way. Um, we can drive this equation inside of the cells. Carbonic anhydrase allows you to generate the bicarb, kicking out the hydrogen ions, which is buffered by the phosphate buffer and the ammonium buffer in your tubular fluid. You'll actually be secreting more acidic urine thanks to this excess in secretion of hydrogen ions. 
All right, so this is in the um, response to acidosis. We can also, and, and that's just kind of that bicarbonate buffer system we are seeing in the tubular fluid and we are seeing it in the, the cells as well. We can also, if you remember, one of the things that we can do is generate bicarb by breaking down amino acids. So that was another way that we can increase bicarb reabsorption um, and we get rid of the ammonia, which also might help uh, buffer some of the hydrogens that are being secreted out in a uh, low pH. So this would also be in an acidic case. This third little strip of a column, this is what happens when you're in alkalosis, when your pH is a little bit on the higher side. Um, and then we're gonna be swapping those um, ions, the hydrogen and the bicarb. So your kidneys have the ability to do mainly secreting hydrogen ions and reabsorbing bicarb, but have the ability to, as needed, to reabsorb hydrogen and kick out bicarb. They can swap those uh, transport mechanisms, not the exact same transport mechanisms, they can kind of kick in other ones to get rid of bicarb and absorb hydrogen, reabsorb hydrogen, because we are too alkaline. And what we need if we're in an alkaline pH is we need to have more hydrogen ions. So our kidneys have the ability to do both of these mechanisms depending on the situation at hand. And if you are in homeostasis, that's great. You're maintaining a normal pH. But if you are too acidic or too alkaline, these cells have the ability to manipulate those hydrogen ions and bicarb as needed to help you maintain pH. Now, when we talk about these compensatory mechanisms, the respiratory response is a lot quicker. Um, the renal response is a little bit slower, but it can handle a larger magnitude. So your respiratory system can kick in right away, but it can only do so much where the renal system takes a little bit of time to get started, but it can handle a pretty big difference in your pH imbalances. So let's take a look at some summary slides of just general response to acidosis and alkalosis. So this first one is we kind of have our respiratory response, we have our buffers, and we have our kidneys. So for whatever reason, we are increasing hydrogen ions. That could come from any source. Uh, if we're using the bicarbonate acid, it's probably not going to be carbon dioxide because we need to rely on our healthy lungs to get that working. So maybe this is ketoacidosis or lactic acidosis from diabetes, uncontrolled diabetes, mellitus or something. So for whatever reason, we have a high hydrogen ion concentration. What we'll do in the respiratory system is it is shifting this buffer equation to the left. Our increased respiratory rate is going to increase the exhalation of carbon dioxide by the lungs. Our buffer systems are gonna to try to work, right? So our um, phosphate buffer inside of the cells, the hemoglobin, the protein buffers in the blood plasma, they're going to try to fix that problem. We can call upon our um, sodium bicarbonate reserve to help drive this tying up of those hydrogen ions. And then lastly, our renal compensation is going to be removing hydrogen ions and reabsorbing bicarb. So we're gonna be peeing out excess hydrogen, pumping bicarb into our reserve. All right, so this is how our body, kind of in a, in a quick summary, how it responds to acidosis. Increased respiratory rate, increased excretion of hydrogen ions, increased reabsorption of bicarb. All of those things together should bring you back into homeostasis. Now what's going to happen if it goes the other way? If we have a removal of hydrogen ions, so we have a um, lower amount, we don't have enough hydrogen ions, so what can we do? the respiratory rate is going to decrease. We're gonna hold on to that CO2, driving the equation in this direction, trying to um, add more hydrogen ions. We are going to try to buffer and hold on to that bicarb, so it's not gonna be taking the hydrogen ions out of solution. Buffers in the body will be releasing hydrogen. Your kidneys will be peeing out bicarb and reabsorbing and making hydrogen ions. All of those things to restore your hydrogen ion concentration. Because as bad as acidosis sounds, alkalosis is just as complicating um, for your body systems and damaging to your body systems. Acidosis is a lot more common than alkalosis, but alkalosis is just as dangerous, right? All of our enzymes need that optimal pH. And if we cannot maintain an optimal pH, our cells are gonna start suffering. All right, so that is our compensatory mechanisms. How does your respiratory system change? increasing, decreasing rate? How does your kidneys change, um, whether they are reabsorbing or secreting hydrogen ions or bicarb to maintain your blood pH? 
Okay, I have one more video to summarize the whole thing and kind of wrap up um, different kinds of uh, pH imbalances, acidosis and alkalosis. All right, I will see you then. Bye.